be you gonna be shocked at my stance. It's gonna go crazy, bro. Good morning, house guests. It's time to wake the fuck up. I said on episode one, I predicted a self eviction within one week. You did. Uh, it's you not did. the right. It's not the right person, and it's also not a self eviction. Uh, we have Luke Valentine has been expelled uh, from the Big Brother house uh, for saying the N word, and uh, well, we have a podcast here, and my guy Terrence is here to speak on it from his own perspective, his own stance. When did you find out about this? Was it my text or or what what happened? Man, I was getting text messages uh, and then you hit me and I had to go in there and look for myself just to be like, I, I know he didn't say that. I, I just know he didn't. And he did. He absolutely did. I said, wow. I said, that's crazy. And the, and the thing about him saying it, one is foul. Um, but it's no different than Michael, you know, saying weaponizing racism, you know, yep. so now they double down on it. And now he just blatantly said it. I wasn't surprised about Jared's response, just as I wasn't surprised about Monty's response to it. You know, both kind of, as you want to say, just soft men who not just passionate about what's right and what's wrong and what people can get away with. And he shouldn't be able to get away with it. And he couldn't get away with it this time. And trust me, the simple fact that feeds didn't go down straight away was them, me feeling like they were trying to figure out a way to be like, oh, it's okay. It's not oh. going to be that bad. You know, we, 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 we can get away with that, right? Like we got away with it last season, didn't we? Yeah, oh. we did. We got away with it last season. I'm like season. cringing, dude. And uh, <laughs> I think because I know so much and there's so much I also can't say right now. Exactly. Well, like, yeah, yeah, no. You know, but I know. like my body, I don't know. I just fucking can't do it, but I'll let you keep going. I'm just like freaking yeah. out already. No, it, it, and you know, that's exactly how I feel about it. I felt like they brushed it under the rug. Uh, last season with what happened and you know it was going to be collateral damage for Kyle you know and it wasn't even his fault it wasn't nothing that he put together himself and 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 weaponized it was Michael doing you know what I'm saying no different than Michael kept Taylor on the block and it was a race situation he kept her on the block so it's like you want to be mad at me about Taylor this fool in a race situation still kept her on the block to protect and let's put it blatantly let's to protect his white Brittany yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm just hey, I'm just gonna call a spade hey, a spade just as um yeah she's an accomplice word? yeah 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 she's, yeah, she's, she's an just as responsible as Michael's like take on it she was exactly. part of it all like exactly. um, I don't fuck with her either so it's like yo like well, you were part of it like exactly they didn't and, get up and they didn't get up at arms about anything until they themselves along you know and Alyssa was on the block it did not matter when a minority was on the block they was cool with it everything was comfortable you was decorating the house and all this other shit making cookies and everything else but as soon as y'all was threatened oh my god we up in arms we got to do this we're gonna do this I'm gonna expose Kyle I'm gonna do this you went on your rent so now you have somebody so comfortable with saying the word that he uses in his everyday life because you don't you don't just say that you don't just That's say what that. I have to say I'm going to jump in real quick only because like I'm I agree with you 100 percent on that where like it came out so seamlessly so easy so like this is how I talk to my boys clearly because exactly. there's two white boys in the room and it was very he's talking to Corey initially like to his face he turned to Jared and was like sorry uh, exactly uh. And it's like bro. I don't give a fuck. That's clear that that's how you speak in real life. Like it is. And all it took it was is. six days of slop and uh, <laughs> for you to realize, you know, when, when we live there, you kind of forget the cameras are there. And I think that's the good thing about the show is yeah. that a lot of us are just being real and honest. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for him, he got found out anyway, go ahead. It's clear that he speaks like this in real life, but go ahead. Definitely. He, you know, you know, he speaks like that. And he was he was so comfortable saying it. You know, it was just like, hey, I'm in here with my boy. So I'm going to chop it up with him and I'm going to just tell him, hey, I was in a cheese room, nigga. Oh, uh, oh uh. and as you know, in the HOH room, you feel so um, shut off from the house, like in a good way. Uh, we right. we actually spent the week there, me and you. <laughs> and uh, you always feel like, yo, this is where you talk game. No one's coming in here. You oh, honestly yeah, you mean feel not, like. Not, not, not the HOH. You mean the, uh, oh, the have not room. Oh, I'm so sorry. Have not no, room. Um, yeah. Thank you for correcting that. Uh, but yeah, so like you truly feel like, honestly, yeah, more than the HOH everybody. room. Like even when I was yeah. HOH, I still felt like people could hear me, this and that. But you go to have not room. It feels like a dungeon a mile away from the freaking Big Brother house. 
Yep. And so when you get in there, there is a different sense of comfortability. Yep. And, uh, and this just goes to show you be, kind of become a little more yourself. Weirdly enough, I don't know how to explain it to people who watch the show, but once you're there, you feel like it's because it's, at the end of the hall upstairs and you have to go down another hall into another room and she yep. feels so removed point yeah. is clearly he felt comfortable to be oh, himself. Definitely. And so it definitely. showed his cards. It definitely showed his cards and they had to, they had to, they had to figure out like, damn, what the hell do we do? What do we do? Well, Kristen ain't going home. Probably would, like you said, wasn't going home any damn Yo, way. She wasn't going home anyway, whether it's a mm. twist or not, but, uh, and we'll see how they explain it tomorrow. If they pull the whole, well, you know, some things, sometimes things just happen. When I came and saw that about Paloma, I was pissed. I'm like, how about you speak on how, how this strong 22 year old woman said, I want to go home right now. Paloma yeah. told me that in the HOH room. And I told her, I support you. Like, you know, do what you got to do. But I just wish they shed light on the strength of someone going, I, I want to go home. I'm not exactly. made for this. But exactly. in this situation, I hope they point out, Hey, this guy fucked up. But tonight's episode will just be your standard. They've already edited the episode, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Um, but tomorrow, the live episode, I'm sure Julie's going to speak on this. And I can't wait to see how they speak on it. Oh, I, I can't wait till these two years is up. because I, oh I know. God. I know. I want to I want to <laughs> say so much. And you have way more um, oh, as far boy. as this perspective they, they specifically. Gonna... About yeah. this topic specifically, two years, y'all, y'all, don't worry. This fire is gonna stay lit for the shit that I gotta say. Oh, I we're only one you. year away, and I'm yeah. I'm still learning new shit. Like that's what's crazy. Literally, like uh, two days ago, I learned new shit. I won't say from who or how. You already right. know everything, but like, it's like, yo, like I'm still learning, and I can't wait to talk with talk with more people from the show or from behind the scenes or whatever it may be. Right. Uh, allegedly, but like, it's just like, yo, like we're learning still. And it's been over a year, almost a year f today that I left the big brother house. And so yeah, it's today. like, yo, yep. this is crazy. So we got it. We'll never forget it. And you and I, I talk so much that we talk about the real shit, uh, right. but just so listeners know, like there are things that we can't say and that we can say. And so I do yeah. edit things out because I, I look back on it going, that might, that might be a little too much. This and that. Exactly. And, um, so, Even if I go over. <laughs> well, the only reason we do that is because well, we can't say some things. And I, I respect the contract that I signed. Like that's what exactly. it is. Exactly. But right. a year from this finale coming up, we'll, we're released to pretty much speak on everything. I'll reread the contract to make sure everything's taken care of. But it's right. like, yo, like uh, we have a lot to say. And if you guys are listening to this podcast, you know that we keep it real. And like, we, we have, we, we don't sugarcoat anything. We're also not exactly. cloud chasing. We don't need clicks no. or views. Like we just we don't. have something to say and we have a platform. Exactly. Now. I don't, I don't, I don't need anything for cloud. I don't, I, I'm, I'm cool all by myself. I got, I got, I'm, I'm who I am already. Well, people yeah. mentioned, <laughs> we're, we're going to get back on this topic, but I just want to point out that people mention on Twitter, you're not the first ex big brother house guest to ever do a podcast. And I'm like, yeah, but we're the only ones who like keep that shit real. Like, and we're, we're unbiased about everything even if there's 10 people watching this i don't care like it helps us to just release everything that's been trapped inside our soul exactly uh, and so exactly. doing this podcast i have to edit some things but until then we'll, we'll still keep shit real but maybe Absolutely. in a year our subscribers will get the full rendition of all of these podcasts <laughs> <laughs> the two hour versions um but anyway uh let's jump back on this shit so so just to kind of get back on track with what's really happening in the house mm -hmm. Can you either separate or correlate the difference of uh, Luke saying the N word nonchalantly, whatever his situation is, doesn't make it right uh, compared to Michael's version of not saying the word, but in my opinion, in my experience, using race to in his benefit for his power in the house. Right. So w with that, it's like, I think Michael's situation was absolutely worse um just because when you do things of that nature it can really hurt people in real life when you when you try to do that um and you know people have lost lives to that um him saying the word is just innately who he is you know and we know people like that all day every day you know what i'm saying who lives behind that door where they where they where they say that you know openly and freely and that's 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 stay true life so you know neither one of them are right but you know if i had to weigh who's worse 
it was Michael to me, man. It was it was definitely Michael to me. And they covered it up and they let it they let it ride. And I felt that that was super foul, you know, based on that situation. I felt that Michael should have been handled the same way that they handle in Luke. You know what I'm saying? That was my opinion about it, you know. But of course, nobody would had the backbone to other than myself to to say anything or to step up for it. They were just a bunch of sheep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Monty's quote was, you know, I don't want to put my neck out there and then I'm on the I'm 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 next to be evicted. This don't have nothing to do with game oh, no more. Wow. This is about principle. Exactly. Um and that stuck with me, you know, to the core that he said that, you know, and it was just like, yeah, bro. So you you know exactly why you would never get my vote. Ever yep. have would have gotten my vote. I don't care who you were sitting next to, bro. Yeah. So. I, I, you know, I can't remember those episodes and, or obviously you were there in the moment. Yeah. So, you know, more and have heard more from all of them. But I remember you being the only person to really like shed light on it to Michael opposed to like backing down, you know, and, right. and this is my perspective with Jared in this situation for big brother 25, where, um, and this is just me from the outside, uh, you know, whatever. So I want to hear your side of it where I was like, First of all, that's very nice of Jared to, to, in my opinion, talk it down. Like, yo, it's all good, man. It happens. First of all, it shouldn't happen is my <laughs> right. number one thought. And uh, very kind of him to, to kind of like almost make Luke feel okay about it. Uh -huh. But it seems that Jared seems to be a very sweet human. It seems that he doesn't want to cause wave. I don't know his actual thoughts on it. Hopefully you know, maybe even after the season or maybe right now they're filming in the DR what he really thought. And he's just trying to ease the blow of it all. Now, my question is if you were in the have not room with Luke, would it have gone down differently? Would have you have said it differently? What, what, what do you think would have happened? Would have have happened at all? You know, no, I would, I would, I would have questioned him instantly. Like you felt comfortable saying that, you know, how, how comfortable do you feel like saying that, bro? Like, cause you said it very comfortably. Like, I need to understand why did you, what, why was those your words? Don't, don't be sorry because you're not sorry. You said it, you know, I would want to ask him, I'm going to run, I'm going to ask him the questions like, bro, what, what, what make you think it's okay to say that in front of me? You know what I'm saying? What makes you think it's okay to use those words in front of me, bro? You know, I want to ask him that, you know, Jerry did, you know, and I, I, I could atone with that, that he, he, he's a good kid. You know what I'm saying? And he just like, I don't want to make waves. And, you know, uh, it, it'd be funny when I think his, his words was, it, it's funny that, you know, white people be more embarrassed about the things that I should be more embarrassed about. That's because it's a super rare flag and you should have that type of energy for it. And they're expecting it because they've gotten exposed for something that they should not be doing. So that's why they feel the way that they feel and you giving them a pass. And that's us as a race is we always give so many passes to people who've done some very horrible things. And mo majority of the time we give the passes is because of deeper situations within us, the legal system, which doesn't allow for us to have the, the right justice that we are supposed to have in certain situations. So it's like, you know, forget it. You know, we, we go with, well, we're not going to get that word power. So, you know, let's you let, let it go. He didn't use it maliciously. So let it go. No, he don't get the right to use the word. That's just it. And that's all. And when he do, you don't, you're not going to feel comfortable around me saying it. That's the thing. You're not going to feel comfortable around me Go in your quiet corners and wherever you feel comfortable saying it, but up in front of me, you're not going to say that. Yeah. So that's my feel. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, yo, when not, when we were, we were in the have not room on week two, me, you, Nicole and Pooch. And mm -hmm. if Luke was in place of any one of us and you were a part of that situation, mm -hmm. As soon as I saw this, I was like, this shit would not have gone down this way. Um, not saying it would have necessarily blown up because you're such a good person. You, you kind of had me all shit. Yeah, we I'm saw, not gonna, I'm we not saw gonna, how you did you it know, with Michael. Yeah, I'm going to be cool with it. Just no different than I was with, with Michael. And I told him, I'm like, bro, you're not going to win the game. I promise you that I'm going to make, I'm <laughs> yeah. you're not going, you're not going to win this game. You're not going to win this game. I, I can guarantee you're not going to win this game, you know? So it's just like how you just have that demeanor with people. And it doesn't have to be in a way of, I'm going to jump down your throat. I'm, you know, I'm going to, you know, jump up and smack fire from you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, no, I want you to atone for what you did. And we could do this in a conversation just so you understand my energy you, and, and, and we can move forward with that. And I want to understand your perspective of why you think it's okay. 
and why you think it's cool. Yep. And then get the fuck out of this house. Like, um, oh, oh God. Oh, that, God. I mean, that's on, I mean, I'm glad CBS did act on it. Uh, finally after 12 hours is my thoughts is like, um, I was telling Shay in this video that I sent over to him, you know, for our, like our thoughts on it. I was like, yo, like it happened at one Oh four AM at one Oh five AM at the latest. It should have been like, Luke, come to the diary room. That's it. Exactly. It should have been like, let's go. Yeah. Diary <laughs> yeah. room upstairs. Let's go. This is some serious shit. Five hours later, send the HOH to the diary room downstairs, read the letter and let's get the shit over with. With get that said, with. in that situation, that's what's happening right now in the big brother house. As far as our experience goes, yeah. Um, it probably already happened because we're now about two hours past feeds being down. So most likely, uh, Riley as HOH has been called to DR, uh, one downstairs, probably walked in, saw the letter on the couch. Like I did for, for Paloma, get out in the, uh, the living room, call everyone in and, uh, read the letter straight up for the first time. Don't read it yet. And it's like, okay, so gotcha. I'm sure that's happening right now. If it hasn't already. And I remember in our situation, it felt like a funeral in the house because everyone loved Paloma. She had such a sweet and positive light in the house. And we knew what was kind of happening. It was very sad to see mm, like one of was. our friends in the house, uh, you know, spiral and dwindle like that. In this situation, I'm interested to see how everyone reacts when this letter is read to the house and, um, and how will Jerry react and how will Sir react to her, her son the way he reacted and all those other things that, that come along with it. I don't know if they'll show exactly. anything, but obviously there's yeah. going to be a talk on the feeds once they come up for and of a, course, a couple of days. I want to see how, how, how Miss Felicia <laughs> felt about the whole thing. <laughs> she might call Jared to the other room. Like, come here. I, have a, I need to have a talk with you. <laughs> so, so, so let me understand this. You didn't, you ain't smack them. You ain't, you ain't do nothing. As a bare, bare minimum, you didn't call me, dude. Could you imagine right. if Felicia was there? Oh Lord! Oh, it would be even done. Sari. If, oh yeah, if yeah Sari absolutely. Or, yeah, yeah. If, if any of them were there, they they would have definitely addressed that situation right there. But you, but you could definitely see that. Um, um, what's the uh, gentleman name with the H? How you pronounce his name? Oh, Heisem. Heisem. Heisem was just shook. Done. And and if you see Corey's face, it's from a different angle. He's like pissed that it even was like thrown at him. Like, don't put me in this fucking conversation. Exactly. And Heisen, uh, you know, Heisen's like, hell the fuck, no, you did it right now. <laughs> right. Uh, He's he Heisen, Heisen was like, I know I'm not in this room at this <laughs> moment right now. You got and to be yo, fucking kidding you, me. <laughs> yo, you know how they have to do that stupid fucking boo thing? Heisen, <laughs> right. he's the fuck out. He's like, I ain't spinning shit. I Shit. ain't kicking my own ass. I'm getting yeah. the fuck out of this fuck, room. And, and Corey did literally one to be like, I ain't getting kicked out of this game for some dumb bullshit. I'm going to do one boot kick. He didn't even spin shit. He's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. They bounce, dude. They're like, which I would do. I, I'm re yeah. removing myself from this fucking situation. Uh, exactly. Let these motherfuckers deal with it because that's their, their problem, you know? And uh, yep. they got the fuck out. And I'm, I'm wondering if they went downstairs and said anything immediately, or is it now that they're, telling the house that he's gone is it like yeah we were there and you know right. and that's not their fault i'm that. sure they're like we didn't know what to think like exactly and it's not and, their and, fault and, you know yeah, it's not their fault and i and i give i give them you know all that energy because i would be, i would expect them to do exactly that because it's like they they are caught off guard they don't know how to respond to that situation you know what i'm saying so it is putting them in a you know it's it's it's, it's a hard spot it's a hard spot when it comes out Hey, yeah, we was in a room. This is exactly what happened. Blase Skippy. Boom. Yeah. The only difference I would have done, and this is everyone reacts differently, is I would have waited until you were alone if you were the person in the room slash Jared now. And then I'd be like, hey, dude, like, how do you want to go about it? I don't want to go and like just spread all this news right away. Like, I want to make sure you feel good about it, whatever, or talk to production and all that stuff. But um, yeah, they didn't really have a fight in it. They just fucking bounced. So I get it at least. Luke's gone within 12 hours, a little too long, in my opinion. Um, Very too long. Especially for this. Um, yes. Paloma's, I know they're trying to like make sure she was okay and they wanted to like keep her there, you know, because she's part of the game. This is like, no, you fucked up and you're out of the game. Like, exactly. that's what it is, you know. Um, exactly. I can only imagine the house right now is basically all in agreement of like, well, if he said it, it's good that he's gone. From my understanding, no one was close to Luke. He didn't start speaking up till like two days ago. And honestly, my thought was, this is fucking why he was scared to say some bullshit. So he shut the fuck up for five days. And then someone's like, you got to start playing the game. So he started talking 
all of a sudden, you know, he got too comfortable. So with this all in play now, obviously we lost a house guest. We don't know if there's an 18th. That's always been a rumor. Whether there is or not, it doesn't really matter. I want to know what do you think or how will this affect the game moving forward? Do you think it's a short term like the week of? Obviously, we think Kirsten staying no matter what now, like last season, uh, yeah. nothing changed because someone was gone. But do you think this will affect the overall game? Because he wasn't connected with a lot of people at all. No, he wasn't connected with nobody. Um, and everybody keeps talking about this uh, 18th bed in the house. Um, we, we're in the, um, the, the metaverse of big brother. So anything can happen. So it's possible that he could just be replaced, um, with, with, you know, another alternate person that they, uh, recruited. I mean, that applied <laughs> either or those that's all out there. That news is out there. Um, <laughs> Yo, and if they're recruiting people, if Luke was a, a recruit, yo, they're they're going to the wrong places. Who, who's this recruit? Uh, yeah, that's like, yo, <laughs> what's their background? Um, yeah, I, I just wonder how it'll affect the game even now with having uh, Kirsten in the house, who we already thought wasn't going home, but the fact that she's officially staying, you know, obviously we'll know official tomorrow night, but like, right. There's no way that she's that anyone's going home tomorrow. Like we know how that went. Uh, Riley's HOH is pointless, meaningless, just like mine. So now her and I have a whole nother connection. Yo, you guys had the same, you had the same HOH. I'm going to put my arms up and be like, I fucking get it. If you saw my season, (laughs) I fucking get it. Bring it in. You know, like, because, but she's like losing her mind. I know first HOH it's crazy, but I had actual like blood on my hands. She was forced into this in a sense. It wasn't her exactly. fault. No, she was forced into but it. But she was losing her mind these last couple of days. I don't know if you've seen all the feeds. Yeah. Um, and Cameron's a whole nother creep yeah, situation. I was going we to talk ask about, you about that. So I don't know. I haven't been able to catch up with, with, with what's going on with Cameron because of what's been going on with Luke. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that shit. You know what? Good for Cameron because this Luke thing overshadows this shit easily. But okay. in short, you know, um, We'll talk about this tomorrow night after, you know, the live show or whatever, but uh, we'll dive a little deeper because I wanted this to be about this situation. Yeah, because I want to learn more ridiculous. about what's going on to Cameron, too, so I could have some input on it as well. Yeah, just in short, uh, he's only 10 years older than Riley, so I want to point that out first. Mm, okay. And he's said to multiple people and Riley, you're like a daughter to me. And he's told people, I really do see her like a daughter to me. And when he speaks to her, it's very uh, patronizing and condescending. Mm. And it's, and it irks me the fucking wrong way, dude. And like, it just bothers me because you can see the stress and, uh, that she's going through for being HOH and she's very broken about it. And, uh, I think he's kind of like latching onto the whole idea of like, she's vulnerable. And so, uh, I could kind of get in her head and if that's about game, cool. But it, it, in my opinion, it's kind of crossing the line. And to me, there is a line in the house at some point. And, uh, it's coming off as like, very grooming creeper vibe of like, and then he's like talking down to her where it's like, yo, like he had like a four hour conversation. I'm not maybe three hours in her HOH room. He didn't leave. And she's like crying the whole time. This is like two nights ago, I think. And he initially said, this is what we need to do to get you in a better spot, which I love. It's like, yo, she needs someone to guide her, you know? And basically he was like, yo, um, uh, so you need to talk to this person and then this person and the way you need to go about this and that. And so part of that's like, okay, if you're an Alliance member, I, I got to give that to you. Like you're helping your buddy out. Gotcha. Dude, like three hours later, he was like, so what do you have to do? And she's like, um, he goes like, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Number one, what? And I was like, Damn. Oh fuck. No, she's not your literal daughter. Fucker. <laughs> like she's not literally 10 years old and you have to speak to her. Like she's a fucking idiot. Like, Damn. like this girl is a badass. She, I, I think she's cool as fuck, but like she won the HOA. She's a fighter, right. but she's a little broken because of the fucking stress. And I understand that side of it. And it's like, bro, chill the fuck out. Like I, mm. it's crossed the line to me where it's, it's getting too possessive and it's no longer like an Alliance slash best friend in the house. And I'm like, get the fuck out of the HOH, bro. Like, um, I don't know. It's bothering me. I I liked her relationship with Jag and it hasn't been showing up lately. I think because Cameron's been like taking over and I'm like, yo, Jag was more of a friend. Maybe he has a crush on her. I don't know. But like Cameron's is far more like 
creepy youth pastor vibe for for sure. Mm. And that, that 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 could speak to also his his situation that he has because he said in his uh, I think in his interview when he was coming on online, you know, coming into the house that he's separated from his wife. Oh shit! So, See, so he, I did not know that. Yeah, I think that I got to look oh, back. No. So I'll say allegedly that he's separated and he has a he, yeah he has a child and he's separated from from his from his wife at the, at, at the moment. So um, that could speak volumes to how he does relationships. So or why she's separated herself from him. <laughs> Absolutely, the way Man. he's speaking to a woman like this, exactly. a grown ass woman, exactly. like bro, she's not exactly. a child. Like help her out, but don't don't you know don't patronize her and speak condescending like that. But um, anyway, that's the short update of that bullshit. So spoiler for all you casuals, but um, anyway, thanks Terrence for jumping on. We did this last minute, you guys, we were going to cover the episode tonight, but it wasn't going to work out schedule wise. And then this blew up and I saw Terrence. I was like, yo, before you go DJ tonight, can we jump on zoom real quick? I don't care if you're in the middle, you know, of a drive, just get on zoom on your phone. He's like, nah, I'll be home in, you know, 10 minutes. I'll jump on. So we, we got this together real quick so we could put it up. This will be up, Terrence, probably in an hour. Like, I'm going to get it up as, as quick hey, as possible. Hey, but, go um, crazy. I'm going to be spinning. So I'm going to be up. I'm going to be up for a while. So Hell yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in uh, to listen to this. I really wanted Terrence's perspective on this. And, you know, we, we lived in the house, but, you know, he has a whole different pr- perspective on race and all that. So uh, thank you for that, Terrence. And, uh, man, no we, problem, man. Fuck you, Luke, and still fuck you, Michael. Yeah, yeah. I immediately unfollowed <laughs> Luke's Instagram account, whoever's running it and stuff. I was like, nah, I ain't affiliated with this bullshit. I'm fucking bouncing. Right. Um, so uh all love to the to the cast there. I hope they get through. I'm sure they will. It's gonna be shocking whether they like them or not. It's gonna be weird. But um, with that said, I just wanna go on a positive note that I have updated my number one as America now to the end. America's, America's your number one. going to the fucking end, dude. So Amer- okay, all right. So Amer- oh, America sitting next to who? Going with who? Taking who? Oh, shit. Yeah. Come on. I think off the top of my head, Blue, my other my yeah, other so first that's choice. Your, there's your other first choice. But <laughs> absolutely, America for the win. <laughs> we love you. We love you. <laughs> You know, uh, there's a reason sick. I have seven sound bites of America, but I uh, see. But yeah, what do you think? Who do you think is going to get to the end? Um, with this well, new knowledge. <laughs> well, actually, like, hey, crazy as it is, from our fucking season, you know, I told you with all these, if, if we let her stay in the house, That's she's going to end up winning. That's she's it. gonna end up winning. Y'all keep y'all keep her in the house. You keep you keep you keep her around, and and she manipulated everybody's game. So she she's gonna stay. Yep. I think she's gonna. I think she's gonna adapt her attitude and her and how she moves going forward. Yeah. And she shifts the energy where people are gonna start fucking with her. Yep. So I I I still rock with her. You yep. know what I'm saying? Because to me, she's a better version of what people are comparing her to. You know Absolutely. And I see her do you know, her little like camera talks and I'm like, Kirsten, th- this just doesn't feel like you just be yourself. Like exactly. You seem sweet. You, know, you seem cool. You're pretty. Yeah. Like just do your thing right now. She's trying to do the whole, like talking to America, like this, I guess yeah. it's like my consequences. This is my fault. Like, like this whole like fake villain slash no one likes me type of thing. Even exactly. last night on the feed, I called, she had her own funeral is how I like to call it in the bathroom with like hi, Suri, um, uh, there's someone else, Jared, they were like hugging her while she's like crying, like going away. And I was like, guys, like, yo, she ain't going nowhere. And this is before nowhere. Luke's situation exactly. happened. But- exactly. She's not going nowhere. So in, 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 in my world, I, I got her, I got her kind of, for some reason, going yep. pretty damn she's far based far. on this You're situation. Right. Yeah. So this situation is going to catapult her, um, in a good way. I believe Chris is going to switch her gameplay and saw that that bullshit it's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It was a fluke that the bullshit worked last season. <laughs> and it was, it was a lot of help. <laughs> or allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly for it to work. So now I think she's going to shift and we're going to see a new, a new version of her, who she really is. And I think, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised. I'm saying, I think it's going to be is. for the best for her exactly. and the house. Exactly. Like, I, absolutely. People are going to absolutely. see the real her and be like, wait, you're fucking cool. Like what? The, that's what it seems, you know, but exactly. we don't live there. 
We could be yeah. told a different narrative right yeah. now where like she might be an actual terrible person in the house. I don't know. But in my experience, no one liked her. So like maybe in this situation, the whole house is like, no, no one fucking likes you. I don't know. In general character, like judgment, she seems fucking cool. Yeah. And I think, like you said, it's going to turn around and uh, it is. it'll be a forgotten week altogether. And there'll be a new target, which I think will be at this point. Izzy or Heisem, I think, is going to be the target because they're more outspoken and more obvious like targets yeah, to me. Yeah, Izzy, Izzy G is. She's rude. running wild. Bro, yeah, we're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna talk, talk about her, how she wants to hate people. It's unreal <laughs> for no reason. It's in our, you know, from what we're seeing, there's no reason. And it's like, and you can just tell by her, um, her characterisms and, and the way she acts, it's just aggressive. It's like, yeah. and the house makes you a little crazy. So I get it. it but it's it like, it yo, do. just chill, Izzy. Like, it's just a lot, but we could cover that tomorrow night. Yeah, we, we cover it tomorrow <laughs> night. I got you. But big anyway, bro. We, we covered a lot today, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, Not a problem. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this is Reality Unhinged. If you want a podcast, an honest podcast with unbiased opinions uh, and, and experience from the actual Big Brother house, keep tuning in. We are on all podcast platforms, including the video version on YouTube. Please, uh, the whole like, subscribe, and leave a comment and review helps us a ton. And if you want to support us, you can write us an email or uh, call us on our voicemail below. And you can also uh, join our Patreon uh, to help support us. But anyways, thanks for tuning in. All right, Terrence. Peace out. All right. Peace out, big bro.